two-time Grand National winner and four times a winner at the Cheltenham Festival, Tiger Roll is unquestionably the horse of a lifetime. I don't think there's any better than him. We'd lose Hamilton of our game. Through his whole life, there's always a story behind it. You know, the further the race went on, you could see him travelling and travelling. You know, I, I don't get emotional too often, but I did, I did, I, I did have, have it here in me, I suppose. He has the heart of the line, but he is the complete overachiever. He keeps on doing and doing and doing. He's an incredible horse. He's the people's horse now, isn't he? And everyone knows who Tiger Roll is. He's an absolute legend of ours. He really is the people's horse. He's done racing wonders again, I think. And I know we speak of him as he's a, like he's a human, but he is an athlete. Never expected to scale the heights he has, the Tiger Roll story is truly unique. However, it is also a story of redemption, as after an injury in 2014, he was written off by many. Something fell off that day, because it took him at least two years to come back from that. He lost his way for maybe a season and a half. He would have been times, I suppose, you would have thought, is he ever going to come back or is he ever going to see the days that he did in Cheltenham that time in, in March? We were afraid to show him a race course. Truthfully, he probably was only months off going to the sales. He must have heard that he was on the list for going and, and he, he turned it all around. We take a look behind the scenes with his trainer, Gordon Elliott, and his team to uncover the Tiger Roll story. We look to answer the all-important question, could Tiger win a historic third Grand National in a row? It's going to be hard for him, but he's going to have the whole of, I suppose, of the world on his back, helping him to, to try and achieve such an amazing feat. You need to keep out of trouble. Horses can fall around you, in front of you. I think it's historic, and I think it is most unlikely that we will see an opportunity to do this again for, for quite some time. Can you just imagine if he won three? It would just be phenomenal. We're here now, what, seven years now, and it started off was just a dairy farm or cattle farm. And every year then, there's been just more progression, more building. Based in Cullentra, Ireland, this is the training yard of Gordon Elliott. You're always under pressure. If you don't put yourself under pressure when you're training horses, you shouldn't be doing it because we want winners every day. Since 2014, this has been the home of Tiger Roll. Oh, he's a dude of a horse to have around the place. You do anything with him. You could win and pat him or anything. He's an absolute legend of a horse. He knows he's good anyway, that's one thing for sure. Just a swagger about him. He has a swagger. He's not over big, but he's, he's well built. He's stocky and he's good shoulders and good behind him. And he's, he's all there, kind of, you know, but he's... Definitely got the heart of a lion, all right. He's a great little character in the air. He's, he's kind of a playful horse, and you ride him as well, too. He throw a little buck, and there's always a little bit of an old swagger and a bit of attitude to him, but he's got a little bit of quality to him, you know? He knows, yeah, definitely he knows now that he's, he's a good horse. There's a bit of a swagger to him, and you see him there in the, in the stable when anyone comes around. It's the first stable to see, and he loves all the attention as well, too, but he definitely has a little bit of a... little bit of an attitude, you say, but good attitude, like. Everyone wants to see Tiger Roll. Where's Tiger Roll? He lives in the first stable around the corner when you come in the gate, so he's the first horse nearly you walk into when you come into the yard, so he's, um, he likes all the attention. Purchased as a foal by Godolphin, Tiger Roll was unraced by the flat powerhouse and offered for sale in August 2013. At the sale was Devon trainer Nigel Hawke, who saw potential in the son of Derby winner Authorised and purchased him with a view to racing him in juvenile hurdles. Races for young national hunt horses starting their career over jumps. I'm a great believer of horses. When you see at the sales, you either like them or you don't. And never go in a box to make yourself like a horse. And he catches you. I, I just like to see a lovely eye, lovely look to the horse. He was correct in all ways. So obviously for the right price, he was on the market. I mean, I, I loved him from the first time. Um, I mean, he, he, he's an amazingly well put together horse. The first person to sit on at home was a well-known former jockey that told me he didn't think an awful lot of him. Um, so luckily I didn't speak, I didn't take any notice of him, we kept him, but uh, this shows you raising different opinions. We scored in the first week, and absolutely brilliant. Had a natural eye, natural jump, he loved the job. So for, literally from day one, that's the route we were always gonna go then. I knew we had, he had serious ability. The moment he saw a fence in this way, I thought, whoa, you know, how good is this horse now? 
you know, and that nobody thought ever, and I think Gordon keep going back to Gordon, but nobody in the early days would have ever foreseen that. I would say he's actually quite bright, and I think the bottom line of it all, he fooled us. You never quite knew what you had. Tiger Rose running a big race in second on his race course debut. No, not now. Three deep of those trying to get involved. Off the turn and down the straight they come. Here's the final flight for Tiger Rose. He jumped that well and gets away by four to five lengths to No, not now in second. He's picked up the persuader on the leader, Tiger Rose, but he's got a lead of five lengths to No, not now in second. Zamoyski back in third, racing inside the final half. Tiger Rose on his race course debut for trainer Nigel Hawk. Jockey Mark Quinlan gone to land the open. Now, Tiger Rose gone on to cause a bit of a shock here. In second is No, not now. Zamoyski only third in front of last chance run. Dennis. Um, in the winner's enclosure, when he came in, we were just in that zone of complete joy and thrill that our, you know, our horse that we thought so much of had won so easily. After winning his debut race at Market Raisin, Tiger Roll was quickly offered for public sale by Hawk and purchased for £80,000 by Ryanair Supremo Michael O'Leary and his brother Eddie to race in the colours of their Jigginstown House stud. I knew we had a good horse, and I sold it with the saying, I think this horse could win the, at the festival, not so much the triumph. I thought he was an ideal Fred Winter type horse. Um, and that was the market I was going down. If I even know he's going to win two nationals or four at the festival, I'm sure I wouldn't have sold him. We were all quite prepared to bring him home. I never thought we'd sell him. I mean, there was a lot of people turn around and say, oh, you wish you kept him, this and that, but at the end of the day, the plan was never to keep him. So obviously, from my side, I wanted him to do as well as possible because it, it, it looks back on you in a good light then. And the only one who was really upset that I sold him was Mark Quinlan, because he begged me to keep him because he said, this is this is a machine. And he, he was right in all ways. Um, but he's always loved the horse, so yeah, should have listened to the jockey. I think this is the nice thing and why it's so good for national hunt racing. If I didn't bid for him that day, he'd be running around Lingfield on the all-weather because the, the, the underbidder is exactly where he would have gone with him. But up in the barn, we still got his nameplate on the door. We're there mainly to buy a different horse at the Cheltenham sale, but, but when we go there, we tend to look at every horse. And we came across this guy that, that to be honest, we thought he'd be a Fredwood horse. That's how we thought he'd be. I was at the sales the same day, but I, I actually wanted a different horse on the same day, and um, I didn't get him. I, I threw the ties out of the pram a little bit, and I, got, I kind of got Tiger as a, you know, an afterthought. No, they actually bought another horse, a horse called Tell Us More, and uh, I thought he was coming to me, and then it was changed last minute. He, was, he went to Willie Mullins, and on, I, I, to say I threw the ties out of the pram that day was a bit of a, an understatement. Um, it was probably one of the only times I ever had a few words with Michael O'Leary. Yeah, and the, and the answer I got was, I don't want to do her. <laughs> and uh, he said, look, just don't panic. He says, they bought two other horses at the sales, and um, he said, you can have the other two, and one of them was Tiger Roll, so it was, it was very lucky. There was nothing really flashy or he stand out. He was he was a grand quality horse, but he just he was a horse that won his brazen well. He um, he wouldn't have stuck out, or he wouldn't have said he was going to go on and do the things he did. He would won a, a hurdle in market raising for for Nigel Hawk. Nothing fancy about him. He was he was a nice looking horse, nice individual, but uh, he was by no means um, one of our leading horses in the yard. He was just he was another horse, and we, we were looking forward to having him to to, to try and run the juveniles. Gordon was improving an awful lot of horses, so um, this, there was whispers coming around that he was his work was going well. He was a real strong horse, you know, but what he had, he had a, 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 maybe in stature he, he wasn't that big, but he had huge scope and in, in, in maybe his stride was not equivalent to a horse of his height. So he, he probably had a stride of a very big horse, but um, he, he, he was quite, you know, in stature, he was low to the ground. Mm -hmm. 
just at the time he was bought, you know, it kind of ran ran into leopards, and he he was a winner, so he had to go straight into a winner's race, and obviously the, the obvious race was, was the greater race in, in leopards. And listen, he was he was a juvenile, he was bought to run in a triumph hurdler, Fred Winter. He, we never thought he was going to be a Grand National horse, or didn't like it at the time, but he was bought. Uh, to have, we had many juveniles that year, and he was bought to be a juvenile, and how lucky he was. <laughs> strongly for Davy Russell to come through and lead at the last in the JCB Triumph Hurdle. Tiger Roll produced to lead, a big three. Kentucky Hyden over in second place, then back in third is Guitar Pete. Up the near side rail, it's Tiger Roll, who's two lengths clear. Kentucky Hyden is very tired indeed, and it's Tiger Roll driven out, who will win the Triumph for Gordon Elliott, Davy Russell, and Jiggins Town start. He was very, very good in Cheltenham. He won a Triumph Hurdle. Um, when he was bought to run in juveniles and to win the Triumph Portal is the is 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 the, the top of the game for the for, for the four year olds, you know. It, it was the first winner I was involved in at the Cheltenham Festival for uh, for Gordon, and uh, yeah, it was a it was a magic day, and I've actually the picture at my yard now of me leading him in. It's yeah, amazing how things work out. Tiger Roll would follow up his Cheltenham success with a second victory at Presbury Park in October 2014. And then he went to the, the WKD hurdle up in Don Royal and pulled up at the second last hurdle, hurdle top of the hill, and with a, with a broken pelvis. And they're being followed. Tiger Roll's being pulled up, and King of the Picks riders lost his iron John Julie. So pulled up, hanging his hind legs. So, oh, God, that, was, that wasn't great. So, but when he got back into the stable yard, he was sound. No, so we're all scratching our heads, but. I don't know what fell off him, but something fell off him that day. Because it took him at least two years to get to come back to come back from that. It would be over a year and a half until he won another race. Do you know, I, uh, it, it was disappointing, you know. It took us a long time to get him back after. He lost his way for maybe a season and a half. The ground was very soft and deep that day, and he came back, he kind of had pulled and pulled muscles, and he was very sore and that for a while after. But he just kind of lost his way a bit then after that. It took him a long time to get over that, I think. There was times then when Keith, Keith would have brought him out hunting and doing a few little things, trying to sweeten him up and change his routine and just do a few little di different things with him. We were, listen, we are probably pulling the straws a little bit because, he, he, albeit he ran in high-class races, he, he, he probably ran disappointing. Sent in the lead, tracked by Alderwood, King of the Picks and Jeski, Hurricane Fly. Then comes Tiger Roll and Arctic Fire. He'd always, you know, kind of work well uh, in his pieces of work, but his runs maybe weren't weren't as consistent as his work. To be honest, after what happened up in the north um, with, with his pelvis, which wasn't a pelvis, but something fell off him. But it was, but the vets couldn't find it. But something fell off him that day because he he, he lost his form completely after that. Um, uh, so much so that he was he was he was going to be sold. It more or less par for the course for Triumph Hurdle winners to have a torrid time afterwards. There have obviously been huge, there have been significant exceptions over the years, but I don't think anybody is ever surprised when a horse who has been a precocious talent as a juvenile hurdler fails to make it. And running up towards the finish. It's Raheen and his three rivals nowhere. Second spot for Arctic Fire, Delarc at third, and Tiger Roll fourth and last all through the race. So I think he became then just another forgotten horse, I suppose, yes. He could, he could literally have disappeared without trace at that stage of his career, I think. He was in the wilderness for a whole season. He was gone wrong, he'd wasted away behind. He wasn't moving well. He had an operation on his back for kissing spines. Um, he had a wind operation. He, he, he had he, he had a few different operations, and I don't know whether it was uh, jumping the banks or what, what changed his mind. But he he turned inside out. We were at a stage in, in his career, you know, he was. What, is he good enough to keep to next for next season going forward? It was the time we were making decisions. What goes to sales? What doesn't? I remember saying to Eddie, I said, look, we might give him a go to cross country and see what happened. And yeah, well, listen, Michael's got a good system going that he, he, he um, you know, he, he turns them around. You know, if, 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 if you can get into massive numbers if you keep holding on to them and don't. 
freshen up your 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 squad every year. But um, he sold a lot of good horses, you know, winners at the sales, and he was close to going, yeah. Truthfully, he probably was only months off going to the sales, but he 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 must have heard that he he, he was he, he was on the list for going, and and he he turned it all around. He would have been times, I suppose, you would have thought, is he ever going to come back or is he ever going to see the days that he did in Cheltenham that time in, in March? I thought he didn't look enough, he did, did turn the corner around. The horse had stopped racing, and people forget that. He had stopped racing, it was, it was a busted flush, and it shows the quality of Gordon Elliott to get that horse back, thinking he's a champion. But there's huge praise goes to Keith Donahue because he took it upon himself to get this horse sweetened up again. The main operation we did in them was, was we put Keith up in them. And Keith took him off hunting and went the cross country route. So we just started schooling him over the cross country fences and stuff like that, and just started to sweeten him up. He went away to different, different places and that, and school, and obviously schooled in Cheltenham a few times. And uh, Sally Cascadent and Summer Hill is a very good place for schooling him, so we've done all that. You know, even when you start to ride a horse out most days, you get attached to the horses. And he won them a couple of chases in, say, Ballinrobe and Tobagan. He, um, over that summer, he just kind of grew, I suppose, and strengthened up, and he just became, I suppose, what the horse is there now. Melissa Montage is staying on in the second, but at the line, it's Tiger Roll that wins it. That was kind of the turning point in his career when he came back, and as I said, the rest is history. The Tiger Roll story is intertwined with Gordon Elliott. Like, the standard, of, the, the quality of a trail this man is, to get that horse from being a complete busted flush, to believe he's a superstar. I mean, the reason he didn't run in a hurdle race for three years and had just gone cross country is because we were afraid to show him a race course, thinking he might sulk it again. And that's the reason he didn't run until this, the, the point hurdle in February. So that just is the measure of, of Gordon that he's able to uh, calculate all these horses. Um, in, in his mind, he's got a m marvelous uh, uh, mind for all these things. So. He, he, Gordon never lost faith with him, with, with the horse, because he always felt there was something there to, to work on. Three years after his triumph hurdle heroics, Tiger Roll would make a successful return to the Cheltenham Festival by winning the National Hunt Chase under amateur rider Lisa O'Neill. His jumping had been a bit sketchy, so that, that was probably the worry on the day, but um, it, it was great. Lisa, Lisa was great on him. You know, it was, um, it was a bit... Um, it's a bit, you know, your heart and your mouth the whole way watching the race. I remember watching the race with uh, with Ollie, Ollie Murphy, who was assistant to me at the time. And um, you know, between the two of us, we could barely look, look at him jumping the fence. You're waiting for something to happen every time. And I actually remember watching the race with Gordon and the lads, and kind of be holding your breath inside the wings of every every fence. Thankfully, he jumped and he, he ran away with least for most of the race and and clouted a few fences out on the way, but. He just showed um, how big of an engine he has and a heart at the... He, hit, he hits the bar every right hurdle. And as Keith said, if you didn't know this horse, you said, there's no way he's going to jump. And even he just measures every jump to the, to the nth degree. He just about gets over them. Like, he won the, the, the four-mile chase in Shelter with Lisa O'Neill, and he headbutted every fence. But you keep looking back, you're OK there, pet. You know? But that's the kind of horse he is. He just, every, he just, he knows, he knows. Yeah, he got from A to B, didn't he? He was, um, I thought, at the start of his chasing career, he was, he knew his limitations now, he knew how low he could get, and he, um, he didn't used to get very high. You could see that day in Cheltenham, like, he was, he was just on, on, on the steel straight away. Um, he missed a few fences, but he, 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 was, he was awesome. Tiger Roll was fast becoming a horse to follow at the Cheltenham Festival, and in 2018, he would once again be in the winner's enclosure, this time capturing the cross-country chase under the man crucial to bringing him back to form, Keith Donoghue. After that victory, and despite his widely perceived small stature, Tiger Roll was aimed at the 2018 Grand National. Eddie kind of laughed at me and says, we're probably going to struggle with this fella, and I said, I said he'd be grand. I must admit, I thought he had a fair chance in, in the Grand National for reasons, really, about the actual style of his jumping. Uh, the fact that I thought he was a quick and accurate jumper who would not lose momentum over fences. I thought because he had won the four-mile national hunt chase at Cheltenham, I didn't think there was much doubt about his stamina. I thought he was going to get the trip, certainly. and. 
I just had a feeling that he had a he had his chance. I remember speaking to um, Kevin Ryan, Davy's agent, and uh, Davy probably won't say it now, but he wasn't actually over keen on riding him. Do you know? And I said, this is the horse for him to ride. Um, if you ask Davy that, he might he mightn't say that, but that that's that's kind of what happened. The, the Grand National is an extraordinary race. Um, in your mind, growing up, you felt you needed a big, strapping horse that stays really well uh, to win a Grand National. And uh, Tiger Roll probably is a bit the opposite. Every jockey goes to a Grand National first and foremost to complete. You never really consider winning the Grand National. I haven't, anyway. Well, maybe I have in my younger years dreaming about it, uh, having a ride that, you know, when I was 22 or three, that. I'm going to win the Grand National. It brings the whole world to watch our sport, and that's quite special. In them type of races, when you're using world-class jockeys, you tend not to give them too much instructions. Just go out there and keep out of trouble and enjoy yourself, and you might say don't take it up too early or too late. And Out from that, I don't tend to try and tighten them down, because if they don't know what they're doing riding the horses, they don't really know it, you know? I wasn't convinced that um, he'd take as well as he took to the fences. But he wasn't the type of horse that would go down and give a big jump and, you know, give you a real nice feel over, over a jump. He was just really economical with what he'd give you. He, he, he measures things quite, quite... He's a fine art of measuring, measuring the jumps. He loves jumping. He's, this horse absolutely loves galloping down to fences. You know, a fence has no... Fence is a, is, is, is a real plus for him. I just find it hard to really enjoy it uh, while I'm still riding. I, I hope, you know, not, I, I do enjoy it, but it's kind of hard to let myself believe it. For me, the one hairy moment was, was the last 50 yards. Davy said he was idle and he looked at the water jump, but uh, I thought he, he was just, he was getting tired, you know, it was after four and a half miles. Um. The biggest race of all time is that far away, it's just there, and all of a sudden, Pleasant Company wings by me, and I'm saying, did we or didn't we? First, number 13, Tiger Roll. I remember watching the race, obviously, with them. Um, well, you know, I was watching with all my friends on the track, and Dave Pipe, and a few of us, uh, uh, he'd always be there for the English National, and it, it was just unbelievable, yeah. It's so hard to, to, to put into words. I, I don't know what the words are for, for that feeling, but it, it, it was, it was everything. It was everything just, 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 it was like, I, 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 I could have stayed there until they turned off the lights. You know, it was, it was just fantastic. Tiger Roll would start 2019 with a surprise win in the Boyne Hurdle at Navin. The way he won the Boyne Hurdle, like there was people talking about we should be going for Stairs Hurdle or even supplementing for the Gold Cup, but to my motto was always, you, you, you'd go for the race, you think you had the best chance of winning. But for me, I thought that was the cross-country race. It's great that people want to see the horse, people want to talk to you. It, it's something special. He would then go on to tackle a possible fourth win at the Cheltenham Festival in the cross-country chase. Celebrate a victory for one of the Cheltenham Festival Immortals, a fourth victory for Tiger Roll. Um, he went back, he was brilliant again in Cheltenham. Um, Keith got his day then, he got to ride him into the winner's enclosure. That, that was brilliant for everyone in the yard, because you know, Keith is a big, big part of the team here. And, um, and, and and the horse is special as well, so that was that was a great day. You know, we 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 um, I think we had a slow start to the Cheltenham Festival that year, and for Tiger to come out then and win, it, it just got us going. Yeah, I think he's a very confident horse. I think that, like the more attention he gets and the more you know little details with him, he's confident, and the more confident he is, the better form he's in, and. Um, I think he's just a stamina in his heart. Like most horses after three miles, they start to struggle. After three miles, he just gets stronger. I love hunting and I grew up hunting all my life, so to win a cross country race was brilliant. I think Keith has done the most amazing job because he's a natural horseman. He's a very, very tall man. Uh, it's made it difficult for 
his life as a professional jockey, but he definitely played a huge part in reinventing um, Tiger Roll. With a fourth win at the Cheltenham Festival, Tiger Roll was now a leading contender for the 2019 Grand National. But could he become the first horse since Red Rum 45 years ago to win the race back to back? The English National, anything can happen. Of course, you're, you're hoping and you're, 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 um, you're lying in bed every night for weeks before thinking, I wonder, can he do it? If he does, what would it be like? Do you know, uh, where are we going to go? You know, what, what are we going to do? You know, um, you're thinking of, you know, the homecomings, all that sort of stuff. But it was, uh, it was just unbelievable. The way he travelled in the race that year, he, he never really looked like he was going to be beaten. That's the play by Blow, and they're off. He's let them go. So racing for the Grand National. It's, it's great that it's great that people want to see the horse. People want to talk to you. It, it's something special. Um, but you always kind of think the English National, like you know, um, it. Even if you're favourite, you don't expect it to happen. Because if you fall at the first, second, third in the national, it's the grand national that happens. Like it's helter skelter, there's, there's, there's fallers. So as much as there was loads of hype, there wasn't, I didn't feel that much pressure really. Because he, he, he'd won his grand national. He'd won it at so many Cheltenham festivals. I, I said, once this horse comes home one piece, you don't really mind. But um, you know, the further the race went on, you could see him travelling and travelling. We had the blinkers on him that year. He he he, uh, he he was awesome. Yeah. The black jacket is starting to make ground from the rear as they get to the second last. Magic of light and Tiger Roll is poised on her girth. My approach to it was no different than any other year. Um, I had to block out last year, and I just had to start a new footing. Um, there was 39 different horses around him. Um, there was all them obstacles in front of him. So you know there was no point in me upsetting. Or changing anything. Tiger Roll out jumps Magic of Light at the last. I, I suppose it's like the boxer going into the ring. You know, you have a plan A, a plan A until you get a box in the nose. Um, so you have to leave your, your yourself open, especially in the Grand National. Even when you're jumping the fifth, the fourth, last, the third, last, the second, like you're thinking you're travelling so well, but you're actually thinking, this, is this actually happening? Are we going to win the Grand National again for the second time with Tiger Roll? It's been 45 years, and now Davy Russell shakes up Tiger Roll. Magic of Light in second, Brett Finden in third, Walk in the middle is back in fourth. Tiger Roll is remarkable. He comes up towards the winning line under Davy Russell to win his second round of the Grand National. Tiger Roll chokes the points. When you came to horses, you, you think about Grand Nationals, you think of them sort of races. You don't, uh, you don't actually think it's going to happen to you, you know. You know, I don't get emotional too often, but I did, I did, I did have, have it here in my eye, I suppose. I, I don't know what it's sinking to me until I'm finished, but at the moment, it just feels like it's an outer body, it's that it's someone else has won, has won the two Grand Nationals, if you know what I mean. I, I, I just find it hard to let myself believe it, really. You know, it's, it's, it's an extraordinary feeling. My uncle had passed away that year, and he, he, only for him, I probably wouldn't be training horses or even know what a horse was. Yeah, he used to be his point to point when we were young. I dedicated the race to him to that year. It was it was great, and you know, all my family were everyone was was so so happy. It was brilliant. Entry last year was probably the best the best weekend I've ever had in my life in a race. Just the buzz from being around them as well. So yeah, he's just he's different gravy. The way he won that day, like he had bullet fences and everything. He still managed to win. The horse just loves this place. Loves the loves the national love and it just goes to Adrian and he grows a hand. It did create an atmosphere on the day. I think he had become a, as we say, a kind of name horse at this stage. But also coming back for the second national, it was absolutely crushing, really. Uh, he had the race won from as far as I was concerned, from a long way out. Uh, definitely one of the best national performances for, for many, many years. We had the whole family, everybody was watching it, and it, it was lovely to think we were only, most probably only a very small part, but we we're, were associated with the story like we are. To be part of the Tiger Roll story is just unbelievable. Um, when I was a child, I myself and my family used to go and watch on the bank between the second and third fence, and um, I always dreamt of being involved 
even just backstage with the horses running in the Grand National, but to be associated with a winner and a jewel winner is just unbelievable. And for the team, we, we like to celebrate and we celebrate well when, when Tiger wins his Grand Nationals. So, yeah, it's amazing. It's funny how things work out. Tiger all went back to, to Cullen Traer and say five or six years down the line, he's a two times Grand National winner and a four time Champion Festival winner as well now. It's autumn and the beginning of a new national hunt season. Training is in full swing at Gordon Elliott's. Tiger Roll is beginning his preparation for a historic bid at a third consecutive Grand National. We're not there yet. Um, he's such a special horse. If he, if he went on and won at Cheltenham, you know, he's... God knows what will happen, but at the moment it's all systems go for entry. We can't wait. Um, Obviously, we won't know the weights till the start of February, so that'll be an anxious time. He's going at top weight, we know that. But it's just how, 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 how well in he's going to be or not, we, we don't know. I'm, I'm not uh, the man above, you know, he's probably the only man that knows what's going to happen on the day. But uh, to be fair, you know when he's in good out of form, he's booking and kicking for the few days before when he goes over to Cheltenham or Aintree. He, 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 you know he's been a bit of a, bit of a bio, he loves the attention. Um, yeah, he's, you kind of know when he's in song. And, Hopefully you can get him there in April again. Oh, it should be brilliant. It'll be history in the making and it'll be brilliant for the air, brilliant for everybody. And especially for the horses around here, it'll be great to see him do it. There's every chance he could. I think um, the ground will be very important. If it's good ground, I think he'd have a huge chance. The softer the ground, I think it would lessen his chance. But definitely, if you get back there in one piece, he's definitely got to have a great chance. He seems to love around there as well, too, and he lights up. Yeah, it should be. Um... It'd be brilliant if he could go back and win three cross countries in a row, and you know it'd be his fifth win in the Cheltenham Festival. You know it'd be just part of history, I suppose, and um, I'm just very lucky to be involved in it. Tiger Roll would be one of the best travellers we have. With a few of them, you know where to put them on the lorry if they might be bad traveller. Put them on last, but Tiger, you could put him anywhere, and you can see on the camera, you wouldn't, you know, he doesn't move. You wouldn't even know he was on the lorry. So to be fair, he's a brilliant, brilliant traveller. You know, he gets off and he'll take a look around at his pricked and he's got his own stable in Aintree now with his name above the door. And uh, he'll, he'll go in there every year now, so. If he was to win a third consecutive Grand National, it would be amazing. He owes nobody nothing now winning two, but can you just imagine if he won three? It'd just be phenomenal. Obviously still need an element of luck at Aintree, but given those kind of normal reservations, I would have thought he would go back with a great chance, more or less whatever weight he has. He's trained by the right man, and, and I'm sure he'll be ridden by the right man as well. And uh, it's exciting for, for everyone that's involved in horse racing. And uh, I'm sure by the other 39 runners in the race, I'm sure everyone in the world will want him to win his third Grand National. The lessons of history do kind of count. And when he goes back this time, he'd be, again, he'd be trying to go one better than Red Rum. He'd be trying to do it three in a row, rather than just three in five years, as Red Rum did. It's hard these days for racing to get a look in on a very, very crowded sporting landscape. And I think he stands on the verge of something where he could actually give racing a massive boost by winning a third or by even going for a third successive national. And he's got so many things going for him around his story in terms of the kind of durability now that we've talked about, the versatility, and interesting connections all round. Uh, Keith, who's played this part, you know, coming from a, a relatively obscure background as, as a rider, but has played a huge part in this story. Uh, Gordon, whose training achievements are already kind of legendary, even though he's still a relatively young man. And you've got Davy as well, who is an extraordinarily fine jockey, and also, I think, a kind of very interesting human being as well. In November, Tiger suffers a setback, an injury that could affect his season. No, because you don't like to see it happening, but when we found out what it was, that it wasn't an overly serious injury, it was something relatively simple and small, that he was going to come back and you'd have him back for the second half of the season, it wasn't too bad, you know? Yeah, listen, obviously, it wasn't nice to hear, but in this game, you know, you've got bad news every day. Well, um, thankfully it wasn't nothing too serious and uh, he's back in full work now. We're hoping that we're going to get him back there in one piece. We were a bit deflated at the time, but we knew we had plenty of time to get him back, so we didn't really panic as well. And it's, it's a good help having a good bet in Jerry Kelly, so 
we knew he was in good hands and he, we'd get him there. Everyone's gone well. Um, he's um, progressed well. He started back riding out on the 1st of January. Um, he started off steady, obviously, for a couple of weeks. He's been built up now and he's doing plenty of counters now, so he's going well. Um, so everything so far so good, and he's in good form, yeah. To do a bit of box rest to start off with initially, and then he started back on the walker. And he was allowed to swim then for a couple of weeks. And then the final thing was back riding then on the 1st of January, so he was able to ride from then on. So he's always been ticking over and doing a little bit without stood in the box the whole time, you know. He's doing plenty of trotting and cantering away and does, does swimming and on the walker and so everything is going well so far. He looks after himself too, you know. If he's not feeling it, he won't do it as well. So. Well, it's very good for them. You're taking all the weight off their legs as well, like. And they're doing plenty of work in the pool as well. Very good for rehabilitation. I suppose Keith has done a lot of the exercise with him then since he started back riding out and just started off steady there for the first week and just every week you build up and do a little bit more and more and just get him a bit fitter and get him back tuned up. Oh, to keep him right, Jesus, it's been a big team effort, like. Mary, Dee Dunahoo, Mark Foley, everyone, like. There's been loads of people, Simon there and all, there's loads of people doing everything to get him there. He helps you too as well, but he wouldn't be the best of patients. Every week now he's stepping up and doing a bit more, getting a bit quicker, and um, I think probably all been well. He might go to Navan in February, and if that goes well, then on to Cheltenham, and then he's got hopefully entry. I think Gordon has great instinct for it. And there's no other word for it, really. I mean, there's no manual for training racehorses as such, and brake trainers have their different methods, but they usually have some sort of instinct that sets them apart, and I think. Gordon is one of those. He's almost back in full work. He's, he's swimming twice a day. He's doing probably a little bit more work than he normally would be, but we just had to up his work a little bit to get him back to his fitness. He's probably not going to be as fit as I've had him going for the buying hurdle this year, but it'll be a nice starting point and, and leave him behind for Cheltenham. And the buying hurdle is just about getting around safety and coming home one piece. On February 16th, 2020, despite terrible weather conditions, a large crowd gathers at Navin to watch Tiger's first appearance since his victory in the Grand National the previous April and since picking up the injury which held up his training. The white flag raised, they're off. On the outside is Cracking Smart, who fell third, then back is on. Penn Hill next, and then Cracking Smart and Tiger Roll as they race to the end of the back straight, having jumped three. After Bacchus on is Penn Hill, the town end who is two behind. Brace yourself, Dennis O'Regan and Tiger Roll, Keith Donahue. Tiger Roll continues content at the back of the field at Venora. Penn Hill is taking closer order in company with Tiger Roll. Right with them is Bacchus on and brace yourself. Cracking smart and then killed Fenora, followed by Penhill on the extreme left is Tiger Roll. And it's cracking smart in front between the final two from Penhill and back is Son and then Tiger Roll and killed Fenora. But it's cracking smart out in front as they come to the final flight in the Latrox Island Boyne Hurdle. And it is in the lead, cracking smart up the hill from Penhill, back is Son. Tiger Roll is back and forth. Seen as a warm up race to improve his fitness. Tiger travels well throughout and finishes fifth under Keith Donahue. Afterwards, Gordon tells the press he could not have been happier with the performance. His next run will be at the Cheltenham Festival. He'll be very confident going to Cheltenham again, yeah, because he'll have a nice to be all off level weights, I think, in that race. But then the national as well with the big weight. But he gets bigger for the occasion. He rises to the, the task ahead of him. I've been, I've been associated with good horses over the years, but this lad is a bit. This is special. You can do with the big ones, long ones, short ones, anything at all. That is no real pressure. I mean, to have a horse like him, it's, it's more of a privilege to have him than pressure. You know, I suppose on the day when we get to Cheltenham and entry, it would be a bit of pressure, but at the moment, it's good fun to have him and really enjoy it. I knew the ground was a worry. I said it publicly. If he got through all his form, he, he's, he's never been as good when they're soft and heavy in, in the going. Well, they're off. Uh, they get away for the Glenfarclas chase, coming to the first of the 30 scheduled fences. 
Yanworth with the red cap was the first to take it. They've all handled it safely. The tiger roll in the chicken stand, so of maroon and white, has gotten a position towards midfield on the outer. Never rush a con black jacket just ahead of the white face, Joseph's orders, and then tiger roll. Tiger roll in the maroon and white, Keith Donahue, about five lengths off the leaders. Tiger roll is closer to them now, and he jumped well there. Tiger roll in the maroon and white is a close third. Easy's land really did cut the corner there, but Tiger roll is sitting right on his tail. And it's Easy's land and Jonathan Plugado, stalked by Tiger roll and Keith Donahue, three lengths between them. Tiger roll now shaken up to try and bridge the gap, heading back towards home. And it's Easy's land by two lengths. Tiger Roll is having to work to get on terms. Into the wings of the 30th and final obstacle. He gets over neatly. He's five, six lengths ahead of Tiger Roll, who's given his all. Thankfully, he finished second. He ran a good race, but um, the ground beat him, you know. And that's the beauty of having like, Keith that knows the horse well. And uh, when the when winning chance was over, he, he didn't knock the horse around. He's a bit tired after the race, uh, so he'd have an easy week now. We'll get fluids into him, get him rehydrated. Obviously, we'll keep him taking over. Uh, he do a few more bits of work between now and then, and it's all systems going out for the entry and nationals. As attention turned towards Aintree and the chance for Tiger Roll to become the first horse ever to win a third consecutive Grand National, the sport of racing was hit hard by the coronavirus outbreak, with this year's race cancelled. Gordon Elliott has said the horse will be back next year to try and rewrite history but whatever happens, Tiger Roll is a true racing great and the horse of a lifetime. It's the connection you get with the horses, like, it's hard to explain. I don't really do anything with him. Just check his legs in the evening and that's it, like, there's plenty of lads ride him out there, do everything. I just a small part of the thing as well. Just the buzz you get out of it, it's all, all the hard work you put in. It's just, it's hard to explain, the buzz, like. I think the heart and most probably the muscle between his ears. That's got a lot to do with it. You know, he's a very bright horse. These superstars are not run-of-the-mill. They are, they are completely different. And Tiger, for example, isn't a big horse. But it doesn't mean they can't do the job. All you can describe Tiger is he is the heart of the line. Like, it's just... And the will to win. They're on about genetics, that they, that they can find that, that these genes and racehorses, what a lot of tosh. You can't find the will to win, and the heart this horse has, he defies everything. He's not made like a big chaser, but he is kind of a, a flat, a flat type horse, not hurt. It's hard to explain. He's probably a bit freakish. He's not bred to, to win a Grand National. He's, he's not the biggest horse in the world, but he, he just has got a big heart. When, he, when, when, when he's on song, like his energy is unbelievable. Like Gordon will tell you, he's a grumpy old bugger until he starts racing, then it's all quite the same. He's grumpy in the yard, it's hard to handle, hard to ride. But when he starts racing, he's happy. When he gets fit, he, 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 you wouldn't want to be on your phone or anything anyway. He'd book you off in a flash, so he would. On his race course debut for trainer Nigel Hawke, Tiger Rose has gone on to cause a bit of a shock. He's a freak. It's turned out he's an absolute freak. I said nobody could have ever foreseen what he's done. And it's Tiger Roll driven out who will win the triumph for Gordon Elliott and Damien Russell. Whatever sport you're into, and whoever you think was the best at that. Uh, I, I, I think this guy has to be up there with him, and I know we speak of him as he's a, like he's a human, but he is an athlete. We lose Hamilton of our game. He's top of his game. It is the national chase for Tiger Roll. He is the complete overachiever. Nobody's ever thought much of him, but he keeps on doing and doing and doing. He's an incredible horse. And it's Tiger Roll under Davy Russell for Gordon Elliott. Uh, he loves what he does and I think we should cherish him for what he is. He's the people's horse now, isn't he? And everyone knows who Tiger Roll is. I think everyone's kind of gotten the, the Tiger Roll bandwagon and I was lucky that I was in Gordon since day one, since he arrived into the place and I've managed to, to watch him go on this unbelievable journey and I suppose I'm no different to anyone else. Um, I love the horse, I love seeing him run, I love seeing him win and uh, he really is the people's horse. He, 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 he's done racing wonders again, I think. I think in terms of jump racing, you would have to go back a very, very long way to, to find comparisons. I 
mean, remember, he was a flatbred horse, and it is extraordinary that he turned into what he has done. And it is Tiger Roll that now takes the advantage. Really, he's out there on his own. His adaptability to different trips, as you said, different obstacles, there's nothing seems to phase him. You know, every owner that gets into it wants to have a horse to win an English National or to win a Gold Cup. So every horse we go out to buy, we're hoping can be the next Tiger Roll. You know, I, I'm hoping I'm not even halfway through my training career, so I'd be disappointed if I haven't. But he's a horse of a lifetime, you know, and trying to find another one of him is going to be tough.